Well, hey there, you caught me enjoying a couple of my favorite hobbies, drinking mead and reading stories about other people drinking mead. In fact, Patrick Rothfuss is one of my favorite authors. He wrote The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear. And this novella, The Slow Regard of Silent Things, is tiding me over until his third book releases, hopefully this year. But in his last book, he was writing about the beverage methaglin, and I thought, no, well, that's one I haven't made yet. So that's what we're gonna do today in this tutorial is go over the recipe for methaglin. Now, there's no set recipe. In fact, when I looked up recipes online, the first one that pulled up was from his website, his own blog, and it was a recipe from back when he was in college. He was quite involved, and today's recipe is gonna be pretty simple compared to that, but take a look. It's basically, it's mead, honey, water, yeast, and then we're adding cinnamon, cloves, and a vanilla bean to give it some flavor. So it's a simple process. We're making a small batch using just a one gallon bottle. It'll take just 10 minutes to put together, and then you're on your way to having four bottles of methaglin afterwards. So this is part one of the recipe where we mix everything together and let it ferment. And then in a, several weeks, we're gonna come back and check on it to see if it's ready to be put into bottles. So first step is to get my sanitized equipment out and start getting the honey into the vessel. So I'm gonna start first with Bjorn's Colorado Honey. This is one pound of their Clover Blossom Honey. One trick I like to do to help get honey to flow better is add hot water to, that I'm going to add anyway to the ferment. I'm going to add hot water to the jar to help drain the honey. And that way I don't lose any of my honey. And it tends to make a sweeter mead because I'm not losing any of my honey from getting left behind stuck in the jar. So I've added all the honey and the water and I'm going to put the cap on now and sort of mix it up so we get more of an equal distribution instead of the water on top and the honey at the bottom. So I'm going to be really careful so it doesn't come exploding out, but I'm going to just kind of turn it upside down and just try to mix it gradually. So it might seem like I have a lot to say in this clip, but really I'm just saying shake, 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 shake until it's all mixed up. Also, what's really convenient about using a one gallon water jug is that if you have a, um, an airlock for a carboy, it fits right in there. So I can use the same airlock and it's nice and convenient, just a smaller scale. Before I put the spices in, I wanna measure my um, specific gravity. So to measure specific gravity, you need a sample of your brew before it gets fermented and you're putting it into a container that you measure with a hydrometer. So it is a, a tool that you need to be able to measure the eventual alcohol content of your brew. So the before number is as important as the after number. You get the before number, I got 1.3. Just write that down, and then you get your second measurement right before you bottle. And the difference between the two can help you calculate the so alcohol content. One is the yeast energizer. This is gonna help with the fermentation process. You can also add yeast nutrient. There's another ingredient called yeast nutrient. I don't have that, so I'm just gonna add the energizer. Um, usually you can add that if you feel like your fermentations are getting stuck but I'm just gonna do it for insurance. Critical ingredient, this is the yeast. I'm using uh, EC1118. Um, All right, make sure everything kinda will go upside down a couple times. I mean, eventually it's gonna all make its way through the container. We're gonna add our bag of spices. And how I'm doing it, I'm just gonna twist it through the opening, dunk it in, and let the string hang out the side. So when it comes time to rack the mead off the yeast, I can just pull the bag out. And then I'm gonna pop the airlock right on top like that. So it's kind of holding the bag in place. We've got a good seal. We've got a little bit of air in the container, and all our ingredients. So yeast, honey, water, pretty simple, some spices. I'll put the full recipe on the um, screen for you guys so you can have it in the comments and in the description, I'll put it as well. But we'll come back in a few months and see our progress and check out how it's going. Methaglin.
Well, guys, I hope that was informative and you've got just enough honey on hand where you can put together a mini batch of methaglin. And again, you can put together any a combination of spices that you desire so you don't feel like you have to be stuck with cinnamon and cloves. If you want to try something else, go for it. So let me know how your methaglin turns out. And in the meantime, cheers. If you like this recipe, subscribe to our channel. I'm going to be putting out a lot more homesteading type home brewing type recipes and keep you busy all winter long. Definitely winter is a slow time here up in the mountains. Can't do much in the garden. Can't do a whole lot in the homestead. So if you want to stay entertained, feel free to subscribe and I'll put out some videos every week for you.